What is going on everybody? It's Matt here, your local bro. Hope you guys are doing good. Hope you guys had a good week and that you guys are ready. Short stuff for the weekend. We're going to kick off this weekend with the rise and fall of the killer bees. I have no clue who these guys are. From Yunching, from what we're seeing right now, Ben Roethlisberger, I would assume it has something to do with the Steelers. If you guys want more American sports reactional content, be sure to subscribe uh, and comment down below what you guys want to see in the future. And I'll do my utter best to make sure that I provide it for you guys. Uh, without further ado, let's dive right into the video. Ben Roethlisberger, Antonio Brown, and Le'Veon Bell had the makings to become the greatest trio the NFL has ever seen. They matched the star power of Aikman, Emmett, and Irvin, and they rivaled the production of Montana, Rice, and Cray. So, what killed the killer bees? Bringing the bees together. Prior to Ben Roethlisberger arriving in Pittsburgh, the Steelers were at a crossroad at the quarterback position. They shuffled between three different passers for five years before Big Ben and failed oh. to sustain success with any of them. But when Roethlisberger took over in 04, to say he took the league by storm is an understatement. As a rookie, he led the Steelers to a 15 and one record. And wow. in his first five years, he won two Super Bowls. While Ben's success was Ooh. immediate and he gave the Steel City some much needed consistency at quarterback, it was the Steelers elite defense that carried the load early in Roethlisberger Burger's tenure. They Big had a guys. top five defense for seven of his first eight seasons. But at the turn of the decade, their defensive stars were getting old, and the Steelers needed change. And that mm. change came in the most unlikely of forms. I'm talking in the form of a sixth round pick in the 2010 draft. No what? one knew it at the time, but the 195th pick out of Central Michigan was about to change their organization forever. Welcome okay. to Pittsburgh, Antonio Brown. Okay, so that's where it came from, bro. I thought it was a first round pick. That's going to be interesting. To say Antonio Brown got off to as fast a start as Roethlisberger, that would be a lie. But it didn't take long. While he didn't catch many passes his rookie year, he was an instant impact on special teams. He even returned a kickoff for a touchdown in his NFL debut. In 2011, Antonio's second season, we were given our first glimpse of his special connection with Big Ben. AB only started three games and took most of his snaps out of the slot, but he still managed to catch 69 passes for 1,108 yards. Pretty good. Incidentally, it was also Ben's best statistical season at the time, and he made the Pro Bowl for just the second time in his career. 2012 was a down year for the Steelers as a whole, and Big Ben missed some time due to injury. But behind the scenes, A.B. was climbing the ranks within the receiver room and prepping for a statement season. And when the 2013 draft rolled around, the Steelers added the final piece to their offensive puzzle. This time, it was an overlooked running back out of Michigan State. When mm -hmm. Pittsburgh took a chance on Le'Veon Bell in the second round, draft analysts believed he was selected too early. But Avion was about to change the running back position forever and spark Ooh. an offensive revolution in the Steel City. Nice the dive. Are buzzing. 2013 started the most dominant five-year stretch from a... Okay, so they were Antonio Brown and they were this uh, running back something, Le'Veon Bell, and it was Ben Roethlisberger. Okay, let's go. The bees are buzzing. 2013 started the most dominant five-year stretch from a QB receiver duo we've ever seen. A.B. established himself as the number one receiver in the Steelers' locker room, and he was ready to let the league know. Early in the season, the Steelers struggled and lost the first four games. However, Ow. Antonio Brown was rolling, averaging over 100 yards per game. But there was still something missing to the Steelers' offense, Le'Veon Bell. He was inactive for the first three games of the season. When he made his NFL debut in Week 4, he made sure he wouldn't be inactive again, finding the end zone twice. Following oh. the week five bye, the Steelers' big three were on a mission. They were dominant, unprecedented, and most importantly, making history. Pittsburgh wow. went eight and four to end the season, and A.B. etched himself into the Steelers' franchise record book, blowing past Yancey Thigpen's single season receiving record with nice. 1,499 yards. But he did wow. more than reset the Steelers' books. He accomplished feats never seen before. Brown became the only player to ever catch at least five passes for 50 yards in every game of a season. Bro, that, that, that's got to be a good stat. You guys got to let me know in the comments, but isn't that a pretty sick stat? Bell also had a solid rookie campaign, finishing the year with over 1,200 total yards and eight touchdowns. Although no offseason would be more important to the Killer Bees than 2014. Bell lost 20 pounds over the summer, so now he was still big okay. enough to run over tacklers, but had breakaway speed and was more explosive than ever before. Already a matchup nightmare, being an elite receiver out of the backfield, Bell frustrated opposing defenses by becoming the most patient runner the league had ever seen. He would okay. wait and wait and wait, then explode through the holes in the defense. In his second season, and faster than ever, his yards per run shot up from 
3.5 to 4.7. But Le'Veon wasn't the only one taking his game to the next level. AB and Big Ben also set the league on fire. The Killer Bees were setting career highs in every stat category. Roethlisberger finished the season with 4,952 passing yards and 32 touchdowns. Brown finished with 1,698 receiving yards and 13 touchdowns. Wow. And Bell finished with 2,215 total yards and 11 touchdowns. They became the first trio ever to have a 4,500-yard passer, 1,500-yard receiver, and a 1,300-yard rusher in a single season. All Bro, this gotta be a nightmare matchup for any defense out there. All three made the Pro Bowl, and Brown and Bell both earned first-team All-Pro honors. Their individual success was great, but more importantly, the Steelers were winning. They finished the year 11-5 and and won the division. Unfortunately, Solid. their playoff debut would get ripped right out from under them. In the final game of the regular season, Bell hyperextended his knee, and without Le'Veon in the wildcard round, they were unable to overcome a strong Ravens defense. 2015 was a year of both triumph and tribulation for the killer bees. Le'Veon Bell got suspended for the first two games of the season after being caught with marijuana, then only played oh, six man. games before an MCL tear cut his season short. Ben Roethlisberger also suffered multiple injuries throughout the year and missed four games in the middle of the season with an MCL sprain. No Antonio way. Brown, on the other hand, he carried the Steelers on his back and put together not only the best year of his career, but one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen from a receiver. He yeah. ended the year with 136 receptions, 1,834 yards, and 10 touchdowns touchdowns as he led Pittsburgh to a 10 and 6 record and another playoff berth. Amazing. He was named to the Pro Bowl and first All-Pro team for a second year in a row. However, this playoff run is where everything would take a turn. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh would travel to Cincinnati in the wild card round for a division rivalry game. The Steelers dominated the game, leading 15 nothing in the fourth quarter. That is, until Vontae's perfect left his impression on the game. He sacked oh, no. Big Ben with a hit that separated his shoulder and knocked him out of the game. Oh. This rallied the Bengals to a comeback where they scored 16 unanswered answered points. Ben returned to lead the Steelers on a game-winning drive, but Perfect wouldn't give up that easily. Late in the game, Perfect smashed into... Oh no, that's the tackle that killed the Brown. A defenseless AB. The hit on Brown laid him out, limp Dude. and motionless on the ground. The Steelers did go on to win the game, but they lost everything. Without AB or Le'Veon Bell, they were no match for the Denver Broncos the next week, and Ben Roethlisberger was playing injured. Coincidentally, Perfect was also the player who laid a dirty hit on Bell that ended his season earlier in the year. He single handedly ruined the Steelers seat. Was he a dirty player overall or was it just like accidental tackles? Let me know. Season, killing the killer bees. After a brutal end to the 2015 season, 2016 was supposed to be the year the Steelers elevated to heights higher than ever. Le'Veon Bell took that a bit too literally as he was suspended for a second time for marijuana. Man. Despite Bell missing the first three games. That's so that's so dumb. But also, I thought it was legal in America with uh, with weed. Isn't it legal? Games of this, or is it like just depending on what state you live in? Season and AB suspended for a second time for marijuana. Despite Bell missing the first three games of the season and AB twerking his way into some controversy, <laughs> it was yet another dominant year for Pittsburgh and the Killer Bees. All three players made the Pro Bowl. AB landed on the first All Pro team for the third year straight, and the Steelers won the division. But better than that, all the Killer Bees were healthy for the playoffs. For the first time and nice. on the biggest stage they showed out in the wild card round they smashed the dolphins 30 to 12 with bell and brown combining for almost 300 yards and four touchdowns wow they then traveled to arrowhead to take on the chiefs in the divisional round once again both ab and bell broke 100 yards to pull off the road game upset but the sweet taste of victory soured quickly thanks okay. to a facebook live video antonio brown thought it would be a good idea to give the world a no. sneak peek of the steelers celebration the problem was he showed steelers head coach Mike Tomlin talking smack about their AFC Championship game opponent, the Patriots. That viral video fired up the Pats defense to be merciless. And when game day came around, they no. suffocated the killer bees and blew out Pittsburgh. Oh, What's the fastest man. Way to ruin a good thing? Pride, ego, and money. And in 2017, the killer bees were whipping up a cocktail with all three of those ingredients. People often point out two things when trying to figure out where things changed for Antonio Brown. One is the Vontae's perfect hit, and the other yeah. is the contract he got in the 17 offseason, a four year, $68 million deal that made AB the highest paid receiver in the league. Don't get it twisted. He earned every penny of that deal, and he was easily the best receiver in the league at the time. But in the words of the late great Biggie Smalls, mo money, mo problems. And True. That's exactly what the Steelers got. Le'Veon Bell also wanted to be paid and was not happy when the Steelers franchise tagged him prior to the season. So I just gotta say, it's so stupid though that some of these things that killed the killer bees seem to be live streams and smoking. 
uh like like dumb stuff like this but i guess like in many cases when, when, you know with the big bucks uh, as i said more money more problems and just ridiculous stupid things so he skipped training camp and the preseason because of it once he reported to the team for the first Why? Of the year it was back to business as usual for the killer bees dominance to the tune of a 13 and 3 record on the season but the cracks in the steel armor were starting to show ab started throwing tantrums on the sideline and big ben Bro. publicly threw him under the bus on radio shows they were the most dynamic duo in the nfl but they also hated each other the trio Why? once again made the pro bowl in 2017 brown and bell were again both named to first all pro team pittsburgh had a first round bye in the playoffs and when the jags came to heinz field for the divisional round no one gave them much of a chance everyone was ready for the rematch between the steelers and the patriots that is until midway through the second quarter and the steelers were down 28-7 big oh. ben put together arguably the 28 to 7 greatest game of his career with 469 yards and five touchdowns against the strong saxonville defense but saxonville they fell 45 42 in oh an all -time god upset. this loss would be the straw that broke the camel's back the breakup the offseason was dominated by Le'Veon bell news will he or won't he show up after another but what's up with this why wouldn't you show up if you sign a contract you get the money you have like an entire franchise bro you're supposed to, you're supposed to represent why why do people start acting like children why don't you show up to training camp why don't you put in the work i don't understand what these guys are doing the franchise tag bell refused to play without a new contract threatening to sit out the entire season if he had to then if those headlines weren't enough distraction ben was dealing with his own drama basically getting offensive coordinator and play caller todd haley shipped out of town and if that's still not juicy enough for you a b spent his offseason throwing furniture from his apartment window and being subpoenaed what? for going 100 miles an hour through his local neighborhood the drama off the field carried right on over to the gridiron when bell said he was sitting out he meant it the best running back in the league at the time was a no-show for the entire 2018 season the connection between ben and a b was still as good as ever they thrived in the chaos roethlisberger threw for 5129 yards and 34 touchdowns both career highs while brown went for 1290 seven receiving yards and 15 touchdowns which was a career high for him but behind the scenes everything was going to shit reports came out that ben and brown constantly fought at practice and in team meetings a former steelers pr department employee tweeted that big ben made ab and he wouldn't have near the same success on another team so a let me know what you think about that. B lashed out with an iconic tweet. Trade me. Let's find out. Roethlisberger's frustration quickly boiled over, and it would take just one last mistake to truly destroy the killer bees. In a practice, during the final week of the season, Ben and Brown got into what would be their final shouting match. Brown stormed off the practice field and refused to play another down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The 2018 season came to an end, with Brown watching from the sideline Aww. in a green coat. AB demanded a trade directly after the season. Meanwhile, Le'Veon Bell after sitting out the entire year and giving up $8 million, was free to sign with whoever he wanted. The bees were officially dead. Bro, I, 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 I'm not a pro athlete and I'm not a multimillionaire, so maybe there's something else going on when you come up to that part, when you start earning much money, maybe you become more selective, whatever. But just for what I can hear about this, this is some playground stupid stuff going on, bro. These are some man-child stuff sitting out walking out bro arguing pitching around on twitter with each other bro this is so stupid bro this is this is just you guys can hate what you can you guys can say that i'm completely wrong that i'm from europe i don't understand what's going on here but bro i have seen this in a lot of different sports i've seen this in soccer whenever you have guys coming up fast fame quick fame especially they're getting up sorry to get the money they start gruffing with each other about so so many dumb stuff and like every time it ends the same it's so stupid where are they now ben roethlisberger's numbers dropped significantly after the departure of brown and bell he never made another pro bowl and never won another playoff game he went on to retire in 2022 a two-time super bowl champ and likely hall of famer Le'Veon bell never got the deal he wanted from anyone his decision to sit out turned out to be one of the worst business decisions so dumb but so stupid bro deal from the new york jets that was less than what pittsburgh had offered him the year prior in less than two years the jets cut bell basically getting no production from him while spending 35 million dollars and where do we even begin with antonio brown's yeah. dealer run 
you name it, he did it. He was initially traded to the Raiders, but before even practicing with them, he nearly froze his own feet off in a cryotherapy chamber. He then refused what? to practice because he couldn't wear the helmet he wanted, and after being fined for missing practice, he cussed out the Raiders' GM and was cut from the team. He was then signed by the Patriots before what? having two sexual abuse allegations put on him. The Pats had no choice but to cut him. But lucky for AB, once that was cleared up, Tom Brady was able to get him signed by the Bucks, where he won a Super Bowl. And yeah. right when things were looking up, Antonio Brown got into an argument with Bucks head coach Bruce Arians on the sideline that led to AB getting half naked and leaving the stadium mid-game. He was cut following the act. Despite 13 yeah. Pro Bowls and six All-Pro First Team distinctions, perhaps God. the most talented trio the NFL has ever seen never made it to a Super Bowl, let alone win one. Bro, I just gotta say, uh, I just want you guys, to, I want you, I want to be clear about this. I don't disrespect any of these guys' athleticism. I think just by looking from how they play, these guys are amazing athletes. They were amazing, a perf perfect trial from what we could see when it worked out. These guys are talented. They were strong, flexible. They were gifted, all that good stuff. But still, if we cut down to the details, this just seemed like so dumb. And you can see when the guys left the Steelers, their carriers went down the drain uh, because it just feels like so many stupid things they became self-obsessed they get bro they get so much hybrids i don't know if you call it bro their their confidence is too high they're just in it for the money they think that they are these untouchable superstars out of a sudden that can do whatever they want they they don't have to show up to practice uh, bro they can do whatever they want they can just sit down and bitch with their coaches they don't respect their coaches uh, slightest argument they run away they do whatever they want and i don't understand why this happens to so many athletes in sport uh, you guys can comment down below probably i have probably i don't know what i'm talking about probably i'm just dumb here uh, and i have no clue how american football works uh but anywho if you guys agree with me and you and you uh, if you have any opinion about this at all please let me know in the comments down below what you think uh i would appreciate that a lot so i can learn more about this sport and how it works anywho thank you guys so much for watching this video uh leave a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to don't miss out on any more reactional content and i'll get and i will catch you guys around in the next one